Let's help this former nun find a future hun. This is a chapel. Is that holy water? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. That is a clip from season eight of Queer Eye. It's streaming on Netflix now. It also stars in Bobby Burke's final season. But you can still get your Bobby fix. The celebrity <laughs> interior designer just teamed up with TriPoint Homes to design the models for their new, two new Alexandria communities, and that's why he's in town today. That's Absolutely. right. Well, first, though, he's here live in our loft. And good morning to you, Bobby. Good morning, guys. Good Thanks to see you. Me. You too. You too. So how does one get involved in a project like that brings you to Alexandria? So I have actually been working for TriPoint, with TriPoint for almost 10 years. Oh, gosh. Um, recently we made the joke that we dated for about eight years before we finally got married. Made a commitment? Yeah, so I've been designing homes for TriPoint. We started, the first one we designed for them was in Vegas, and then San Diego, and then Seattle, and now we're working with all 15 metro areas, and we're just designing really cool, amazing communities for them. How do you still keep the essence of, like, the Virginia area and the architecture alive while also adding your own flair and style to it? Um, you know, in one of the developments, we used a lot of like, a cool brick on the wall, which I think okay. was very DC. You know, a lot of mm -hmm. the homes have a beautiful brick on the outside. Um, so yeah, we just kind of brought some of the essence like that in there, but then infused some new modern flair to it. So uh, the timing uh, couldn't have been better for us, right? Because here you are, you're coming, you're doing this event. He came in last night, he's leaving tomorrow. So boom, bang, <laughs> bang, gone, you know. But at the same time, this article comes out uh, in Rolling Stone that's a bit explosive about you leaving Queer Eye. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I, I made the announcement back in, I think, November of last year that I was, I was leaving that's Queer Eye. That's not the explosive yeah. part. I mean, yeah, we knew well, you were leaving, but the why, I think. Um, I mean, the why, it's, it's been nine seasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it was time for me to move on. You know, with, I have a lot of stuff going on with TriPoint. I have four other shows in development. You know, I think we all didn't think it was coming back anymore because our contracts were up after New Orleans. And yeah, so it's mentally and emotionally, I'd moved on. So just uh, none of the stuff about like the boy band breaking up, the fighting behind scenes, that kind of stuff, not true? True? I mean, that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Oh, that's fair. That's yeah. fair. I have to ask though, yeah, right? Because yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it came out yesterday, mm. so it's all everyone's talking about. That, yeah, that's personal issues with Jonathan. That's not what I'm here to talk about today. There you go. Yeah. Well, I do want to ask you about, I, I mean, I'm a, such a fan of, of your work. I think you just have an incredible style and sense of style. Uh, this new book that you're putting out, how is this going to help regular old people like me just design our homes and make them look just fabulous? You know what? The thing about my book, Right at Home, it's, it's not about me telling you what you should do with your home. It's about me helping you figure out what makes you happy. Because one of the things I learned on Queer Eye years ago was I would go in and I'd be like, what's your design aesthetic? And most of the time, they were people who never really even had the luxury to think about that. They're like, I, I don't know. Or they would throw out some random design aesthetic that they had just heard once that really had nothing to do with them. Mm. So I learned to be like, what's your favorite movie or your favorite TV show? What's your dream vacation? You know, one of, we had an amazing young guy. His favorite TV show was Mad Men. And I was like, okay, very mid-century. Mm -hmm. And his dream vacation was Cuba. And I'm like, okay, also kind of like some mid-century, like 50s car flair, you know? Mm. And so I, I decorated his home with mid-century furniture with like a, a mural from Cuba and some like banana leaf wallpaper. And he walks in and he's like, oh my God, this like speaks to me. How did you figure out my design aesthetic? And I'm like, I asked you what made you happy that had nothing to do with design, and that's what this book is all about. It's trying to figure out what makes you happy and okay. infusing that into your home. It's funny that you say that because when I work with my designer, you know, she'll say, do you like this? And I'm like, well, should I like it? Like, I, I don't yeah. trust myself, yeah. you know yes, what I mean? Yes. I, don't, I don't trust in, myself. In the book, there's even like worksheets that you can do to be like, you know, when was the last time I felt secure? When was the last time I felt happy? Yeah. Like, yeah. where was the last place that made me feel really good? So you can really start thinking about, okay, well, like, I feel super at home in Paris. When I go to Paris, like, I feel like I'm home. Like, okay, well, maybe you start infusing those type of things into your home because that's what you're really passionate about. It. You know what's yeah. fascinating to me? I, I, I'm always curious about the origin story. Where did it all start for you? Um, you know, there's a story I talk about in my book when I was like five or six years old and my mom had decorated my room in all red. It's like all of your outfits today. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I couldn't articulate it as a child, but I just understood that red didn't make me feel good. Like it, it was not a, yeah, to be it's beautiful for clothes, but it's not great to have a whole room in red. Yeah. And so, you know, as every little boy does, I saved up my birthday money to buy home decor. You know, every little boy does right. that, right? Uh, yeah. um, 
and I switched out the curtain <laughs> and the bedspread and everything for blue because I just understood blue made me feel better. Oh. So I kind of think that's my origin story of understanding the power that's, that's right. of design. So where um, do you feel the most happy um, in the placement of your Emmy? Like, did you think? Did you think about like where where do I want to look at this the most? It is I mean, honestly, it is up on like a top shelf in in my office. You know, it's been something we've we've worked to get for almost eight years now, and it's yeah. it's pretty amazing. But I'm also not one of those that I'm like it's right there on the entry table when you walk in the house. It's <laughs> it's, it's humbly on a on a shelf in the office. I can see it when I'm working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I, I do want to talk to you a little bit about um, just, just your impact that you've had on the queer community. Uh, how much of that do you, are, are you going to miss leaving the show? I mean, I don't think that's going to stop. You know, I'm always going to be an advocate for the queer community. I'm always going to be out there creating content and, and shows that can help, you know, further visibility. Um, so, yeah, I don't think that's going to stop. I think I had such an amazing opportunity to be on a show that has done a lot of good, both in and outside of the queer community, and yeah. I, I'd love to keep doing that. Yeah, it's yeah. not relegated to yeah. just that, exactly. right? Yeah. Your, your yeah. spirit is infectious exactly. no matter who you're talking to. Thank you. Enjoy your time here. Thank Bobby, you. Thanks thank so you. much. Thank you. There's everything you need to know to connect with Bobby yourself.